Hello everybody, welcome back to Erndale's. My name is Dale and I am coming to you from Manitoba, Canada. And it's really good to be back. I took a little bit of a break. I had some company. My nephew was here from the Yukon. And we had such a wonderful time together. Um, it, it was so good to see him. It's been I think we figured out it's been like 19 years or maybe even more since we've last, last seen each other. So we had a wonderful time, lovely visit. Sorry to see him go, but he has a lot of relatives in Manitoba on both sides of his family. So he has moved on to visit other family and um, he's still in the province, but he's He's having a great time. He's checking in with me all the time. So yeah, we had uh, had a little break. I feel like I've I've kind of slacked off on a lot of my things. I didn't do much while he was here. I did a little bit, and um, I haven't really finished. Well, yeah, I have finished a few a few little things. I have a few little things that I can show you that I have finished. But mostly I just kind of took some, took some time off. And um, I did notice that taking some time off was not good for the arm because it didn't do any crafting either. And um, my arm has really been bothering me since I didn't do anything. So I guess, you know, I have to keep moving and keep exercising. I did go to physio this week, this past week, and she was very happy with my progress, but there's not much strength in the arm she found so now we're working on things to strengthen the muscles the muscles are sort of working a little bit better but they're not very strong so that is the next step so it's been four months actually it was four months the day that i was at physio from the day that i shattered my shoulder and um it's hard to believe it was only four months ago because it seems now for me anyway that it was a long time ago but things are progressing and i'm i'm not i'm pushing but i'm not pushing it too hard you know like i i know when to stop so like i said i have finished a couple of things so i want to first show you what i did finish and they are very small little projects i have not finished the bear for olive now Olive is my nephew who was here, his granddaughter. And I was hoping that he would come at the end of his two week visit in Manitoba and I would have the bear done and I would send it back with him. But he came at the beginning <laughs> and I just, I couldn't grab it in, I couldn't get it done. So now Olive is gonna get it for Christmas. I've, I've given myself a whole bunch of time to get it done and I can procrastinate like crazy because I am so close to getting it done and I've just kind of, I've, I'm stuck, you know, like I've been starting to sew some of the bigger pieces together. I've got the head together and uh, the bodies together. I'm just almost ready to put the arms together. I have not stitched on the legs at all. So that's sort of where, where I am with that bear. And while we're speaking of bears, I told you that we would do a bear together. And I have got the pattern now. I have put it into a PDF, but for the life of me, I cannot figure out how to get it to you because I don't have a platform. I'm not on, um, I don't have my own web page. I don't have a way to get it to you except to email it to you. So. This is what I'm going to say about this. If you want this bear pattern, and it comes in two sizes. I have the 16 inch and the 18 inch side size. The one that I'm doing is 16 inches. And I think if I do another one, I'm going to go for the 18 inches. But well, that's not going to be for a while for myself. But if you want the pattern, um, I would email it to you if, if you're okay with that. So... Um, I'm not going to spam you. I'm not going to send you a bunch of other emails. And, you know, if I'm not going to give your email away, I'm honest about that. I'm only going to give you the bear pattern. That, that's it. So if you do want the pattern, 
email me at my email address in the link below and my email is always on in the description below just press on the more and it'll drop down and all my information will be down there so if you do want the pattern email me and i'll send it to you as a pdf and you can cut it out now let's talk about that i guess so there are two ways of doing that bear what i did was i had cloth that i made i had a well i'm just going to grab what i did so that i can show you once again in case you're you're sort of new to this project and uh, we'll go over it real quick and then i'll show you why i'm not going to do the second bear quite yet okay so what i had done was i had been sewing scraps of fabric together to make a big piece of fabric like this and then what i decided to do was make the bear out of this so i just laid the pieces down however i wanted and i cut my pieces out of this for the bear then i took just plain ordinary cotton and when i before i started top stitching the bear slow stitching the pieces i attached it to another i cut another set of of the pattern out in just plain cotton white cotton actually I used an old bed sheet and i put the two together and then i stitched each piece that's how i did mine i wouldn't my next one i'm not going to do using a piece of fabric like this i'm going to just cut my pieces out in the bed sheet cotton or whatever you're going to use and i'm going to individually take my my scraps and stitch them on as I go or pin them all down, collage it all and then stitch it. I, that's the way I'm going to do the next one when I get around to doing it. I'm not going to cut it out of a piece of fabric. The reason is, okay, here's the back of this. When, when you get like here, okay, because I've, I've put all these little pieces together, I have a lot of heavy seams in here. And so when you're stitching through that, that's really difficult sometimes to get through. Sometimes you're going through, you know, two, three layers. And then if you have that backing piece on, you're going through four layers and it's hard stitching. So when you're doing it the collage way where you just put it on, you're only going through two layers because you don't have these heavy seams through. So that is why I'm not doing it this way the next time. I'm just going to collage it as I go kind of thing. And I'll show you a little bit more um, when I show you the reason why I'm not going to do the bear right away. So what I have finished is a couple of, I've been doing a little bit of cross stitch because I actually also want to do some ornaments for Christmas. And I finished this little Halloween ornament for my son. This is done on perforated paper. And it turned out really cute. I actually had started it last year, so I can't say that I did the whole thing now, but um, it turned out so darn cute. He's going to love it. And this was from um, Just Cross Stitch last year's Halloween, I think it was in there. Yeah, so that is totally cute. Just let me get the book and I'll show you and I'll tell you who the designer was in case you want to look it up. Okay, this little um, ornament is called Pumpkin Fright, designed by Karina Siokanu, C-I-O-C-A-N-U. And I got it from the October 2023 magazine, Just Cross Stitch magazine. So um, that's where... The pattern for this one came from and it turned out really good so i'm going to be giving that to jonathan for halloween and then i finished i'm going to keep the glasses on sorry i finished um this little one just be you and i found this old frame this actually belonged to my mom this frame i had it in a box of old frames and I was actually going to um, give them away. I was going to send them over to the recycle. 
And then when I finished this, I thought I need something that looks really kind of old. I, I tied, I tea dyed that piece of fabric that I worked on, that I stitched on. And it, it sort of has a little bit of an old look to it. And um, then I remembered I had this whole frame. So I dug it out and I put that in there and it, it just turned out perfect. I'm, I'm really happy with how this turned out. So this is Just Be You. And it is from uh, the Summer 2024. I just got this book, actually. The Summer 2024 issue of Just Cross Stitch. And it is by the design by Michelle Schiminti. So that was that one. So those are the only two things that I have really finished in the last little while. I am also working on another piece. And I'm just, this is a, a Christmas ornament. I have still her dress to fill in. Actually, I'm not using the call fours on this at all. Um, I'm going to put this red in where all this thing is right now I'm just fooling around with these snowflakes because they have some beading on it and I'll show you I actually dyed this piece of fabric too and I, I was trying to get it a little bit darker because the model um, in the book is a lot darker but you know I didn't what I used for this to dye this was I had some I was making some currant jelly and you know you get the bag I had all my currants in the bag and you make the jelly with the jelly bag. And I let that sit for a couple of days. I didn't take the currants out after I'd finished making the jelly. And I thought, oh, why don't I just drop that in some tea dye and see what happens. And I got a really pretty color actually out of it. So um, this is from currant jelly leftovers and tea dye. It turned out pretty good. So yeah, this is what I'm working on now and I'll show you the picture of it is it'll have that um, black and white thing. See, they have the green in there, but I'm going to put red in mine because mine isn't as bright. I wish I had got it as bright. So the design is by uh, Elizabeth Toledo, and it's from... What year is this? Christmas uh, 2021, Just Chris Cross Stitch Christmas Ornaments. That's where that one is from, and it's called Jolly Elf. So those are the cross stitch things that I've been doing. Um, and, you know, I do like to do cross stitch. It's, it's a lot less um, intense for my arm than slow stitching. And, you know, I'm making ornaments for Christmas gifts, too, so... That is, it's kind of a nice thing. I, I do that when um, when my arm gets tired of, I find that slow stitching is more repetitive on the arm and it really kind of, after a while I have to stop because it, it actually hurts. And then I'm still working on these socks. I actually had the foot done of this. This is the second sock. I actually had the foot done and I, I don't know, I must have been in a brain fog or something, but I looked at the, the back of the heel and I had done the the heel flap totally different than the first one. So I had to take it back. And um, so now I'm ready to start it the correct way because I should have had these in the mail. These are going to uh, a friend who lost her daughter uh, recently. So um, I need to get them done. You know, this is my hug to her because I can't give her a hug. I live too far away. So yeah, this I wouldn't I think I'm gonna finish these today. I'm gonna to work on them till I get them done and get them in the mail. So those are the things that I've been working on, except that I sort of I, I did a little short on I think I called it I'm dying Christmas or something like that. And I still when I had that dye bat of tea and cranberry or not cranberry what did I say currants um it it turned really turned the tea a really kind of um antique red it, it was such a pretty color 
and I knew that I wanted to do some Christmas projects and I had a bunch of Christmas scraps. So I rushed up here to the studio and I found all these Chris. I had a whole bag full of these little tiny Christmas scraps of all kinds of Christmas colors. And I just threw it all in there and I left it in there for 24 hours. And it did a beautiful job of antiquing those Christmas fabrics. And it was perfect for what I want to do with it. So I'm going to take you over to the other table and show you what I got started over there. And I'm just, I'm not, I'm not working on it in any kind of pace. I've just, you know, when I think about it, I go over there and I pin a few more pieces on and um, I want to just get it done you know, sometime this fall, and then I, I I probably will give it away, or maybe I won't, I don't know. But um, it's funny because the book, I, I've made this project before, and I have the pattern pieces, but I don't have the, um, well, that was nice. I don't know if you heard that ringing, but that was my son on video. Uh, he lives in the house that we used to own. We sold it to him when we moved out into the country. And so there's still a lot of people in the neighborhood who who stop by and talk to him because he's always lived there. And uh, <clears throat> in this case, there was a couple stopped by who are my friends. So he said, they said, say hi to your mom. So <laughs> he got right on and said hello. So that was nice. Anyway, what was I talking about? I can't remember. Oh, yes. I do remember. So, um, no, I don't remember. It's gone. Anyway, so the bear, were we talking about the bears? I have to go back and look now. Okay. Okay, I had to go and look at all of that. And um, we weren't talking about the bears. We were talking about the Christmas fabric. And I switched the phone, so now my eyes are going that way. Oh, anyway, so... Yeah, I dyed this fabric and it turned out really antique um, Christmas. It, it was, it's perfect for what I want. So years ago, I subscribed to a book from, I think it was from Better Homes and Gardens called Santa Claus. And every year you would get, a, it, I actually didn't get it delivered to me. I got it at the newsstand. And it was full of Santas, all kinds of Santas. People's makes, a huge big figure Santas, uh, artisans. And then there was always a section in there with patterns and things that you could make Santa-wise. And this one Santa I made. Um, and I, every year I have it sitting on the top of my piano and his legs hang down over the, the top of the piano. Um... I made him just out of some corduroy, red corduroy material was his his coat and his hat. And it's such a simple pattern. It's, the body is actually just a tube with two long legs on it. And then the, there's no arms on it or anything like that. You use the coat to make the arms. And so the coat, it's all about the coat and the hood, really, with this one. And... I decided that I thought it might be kind of fun to do a slow stitch one where I collage all the fabric for the coat and the hood and um, make a Christmas one. So this is what I was dyeing all these scraps for, was to make this Santa. So I found, I had the these magazines, they had pull out patterns, you know, you pull them out and you can use them and cut them up or whatever. And I found the pull out but I couldn't find the magazine for it and I thought well this is great because I couldn't actually remember the the construction of the head and the legs I I couldn't figure out and, and I was missing pants because I know mine has pants and I was missing pants and I thought well now what am I going to do I've got sort of half of the pattern and I I really need the other half so I got on I think it was eBay or Etsy. Well, actually, I didn't get on anything. I just typed in the name of the magazine and the year because I knew what year it was. And up it pops. And it was on sale. So I bought it. And it's coming actually this week. It'll be here. So once I get that, then I can actually show you um, a picture of what this is going to be like. I 
did consider going down into my Christmas boxes and digging through everything and uprooting all of that underneath the stairs. And then I thought, no, I'm not going to do that. So when that comes, we will go back to that. But I will show you what I'm doing with that uh, in, a, in just a minute. I did get a little bit more yarn um, from the Sock Train um, subscription that I belong to with Lichen and Lace out of New Brunswick, New Brunswick or Nova Scotia, New Brunswick. And I got, this is the one from last month and it is called, where are my glasses? Um, Marsh Sky, isn't that pretty? And this is sock yarn. She's got all kinds of yarns, but I, I just belong to the sock train and you get you get a a, a, hang, a skein of yarn every month and a, a little gift. And then she had Christmas in July and she had a different assortment of yarns every day, not only sock yarn, but all kinds of yarns every day through July that she could you could purchase at a much reduced price. Um and I was so tempted, but I just, you know, kept the fingers away and I didn't until she put this up. And this is her, her Christmas sock minis. I, I, I had to have it. I had to have it. I couldn't let it go. So I, I purchased this. This is for the Christmas socks and, um, the pattern, she has a free pattern that goes with it, which I got. It's just a striped Christmas. It basically just a vanilla striped Christmas sock is what it is. She does her cuff a little bit different. She, she casts on um, a piece of scrap yarn and then she knits a bit and then she folds it and then you pick it back up. So it's sort of a folded cuff. I've never tried anything like that before. I might do that or I might just do my own pattern. I don't know. So I got this and then I got a little progress keeper as well from her it's a little um where are me it's a little lighthouse so cute so I can't wait to these are going to be for me I'm not giving these away these are for me so I can't wait to start these as soon as I finish um the other these ones that I'm working on now I'm going to make my Christmas socks you can never have too many Christmas socks but isn't that, look at those colors aren't they gorgeous I just love them. Anyway, I'm really behind in my Christmas knitting. I mean, usually by now, by August, I've got at least three pairs of socks ready for Christmas. And I haven't even started. I'm still stuck on these other ones. I haven't even started my Christmas sock knitting. And I have a very long list of Christmas socks to make. So it's just starting to feel a little overwhelming right now with all these things I've put on myself. And the other thing is, right now, I've got beans to harvest and to freeze. I've got a big, that's what I have to do this afternoon. I have to, I have to freeze beans. I've got a big uh, bowl. My big bread bowl is full of beans. I got to get them in the freezer. And there's a whole bunch more out there to pick. And I've got cucumbers coming. I've got tomatoes are starting to ripe. Like everything is kind of hitting me kaboom all at one time. But that's the way August is. It's harvest time. So I'm just going to take you over there now. And I'm going to show you what I'm doing with my Santa suit. And this is how I think if you don't want to do the full fabric. Like I showed you for the bear. This is how I am going to put my bear together the second time around. Now, if you get the pattern from me and you you start your bear it's going to take you a long time to catch up to me with my other bear so i i think if you want to if you have somebody in mind that you want to do this bear for for christmas or whatever um if you want to do it for christmas you better start now because it takes a while to get all of that stitching done on your bear but i'll leave that all up to you so let's go look at what i'm doing over on the other table with my Santa and I just leave it there and if I walk by and I see another piece that I think is look, gonna look good I pop it on there um, so let's go look <laughs> 
So here is what I'm working on. This is the Santa's coat. So it's a full piece and then you, f this will be the shoulder. You fold it in half and then you just seam it here. And right now all I'm doing is I'm just laying my fabric. I'm just pinning it right now. And actually I got out my little, my little iron, my little clover iron. And I'm going to, these pieces that are all sticking up, I'm going to just kind of iron them down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just pinning my pieces. I'm just, I'm just sort of collaging away here, finding the pieces that I want to go where. And then I will uh, loosely baste them down and then I will just slow stitch over top. But these, these pieces got really, a really nice color now after I did some um, dyeing. For instance, this piece, this was really bright and now it's it's very um, subtle. A lot of these pieces darkened up quite a bit. So I'm really happy with this. So this is going to be his Santa's uh, robe and then um, I have his his hood which will be attached later but for now i'm just i'm just laying down pieces and i i've almost this this part's finished this part so i'm actually going to flip this around this is the, this is the front now this is the back down here and i'm just see i just used an old sheet and this would be how if i did my bare pieces that's what I would do. I would cut out my pieces just with a piece of cloth like this and then take my scraps and place them, pin them, baste them down. I do the invisible baste or how, whatever you want to call that. And um, I just baste them all down and then I just start stitching over top. However, I do. I usually just do mostly running stitch. Now on this fellow, I am going to be putting, oops, it's stuck on something here. I'm going to be putting some laces and some trims on this as well. So once I get uh, this basted down, I'm going to add another layer of things. I have uh, some really pretty, really old trims that I'm going to be adding, you know, maybe here and there, just little things. But this is the middle of the the jacket here. This is where the buttons will be. And um, and there's also, Santa has a big bag of toys, so I will be making the bag. I think I'm going to make the bag ma mostly out of darker colors so that it's a bit of a contrast. I'm not going to do the, the jacket and the hood, I'm going to do this way, but I think I might do the bag out of a solid or only dark colors. So... That's what I'm thinking now, just so that it's a better contrast. And then, of course, I have to make all the toys that go inside the bag as well. So, yeah, this is this is going to be a fun project. But this is nothing that I am, I'm not rushing to do this. This is just a, whenever I get around to adding a few more pieces, I add a few more pieces. And as you can see, it's just, right now, I'm just pinning. That's all I'm doing. And uh, But this is how, when I do the second bear, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do it on a piece of fabric that I've put together with scraps. So that is another project. And I really did not think I was going to do something like this, but you know, the bear got me thinking about all the different ways you can, and the different things you can do with slow stitch instead of just doing books or not that, not that there's anything wrong with that. That's great. But there's so many other th ways that you can use slow stitch to make beautiful things. And so a Santa has got to be one of them. Well, that's all I got for you this week. Um, I guess it's a bit of a catch up, huh? a little bit of this and a little bit of that. The garden is going to be taking up a lot of my time as well. I spent yesterday, most of the day out there pulling up a lot of volunteer plants. I'm cleaning through that big perennial bed. I'm starting there. I have two big perennial beds and both of them need a lot of attention. So it's going to be some busy weeks coming up, but um, I want to get a lot of things done in August because September, Gary and I both have a lot of appointments and they're not, 
they're not local we're going to be traveling a bit to our appointments so i'm going to try and really buckle down and get going on some of this stuff and get some things finished hopefully so thank you so much for coming and joining me today i hope you are all well hope you're enjoying your summer wherever you are um it's kind of strange. The days are getting shorter. You know, the evenings are getting darker earlier. We've been putting on some lights in the evening, which is kind of feels kind of strange, you know, at eight o'clock to be putting on a lamp. Um, but the best time of the year, my favorite time of the year is, is coming very quickly. I love the time of year when you close the drapes, you put on the lamp, and you kind of snuggle down. I, I love fall. Now the church bells are ringing. So um, yeah, this is the best time of the year. And this is actually usually my most productive time too. From August until the end of November, I'm, I'm just a little working machine. And I usually get a lot done because I'm not tempted to be outside or, you know, all these other things have sort of stopped. So I'm looking forward to fall. Anyway, I'm going to quit yammering on and I'm going to say have a good week, people. And you take care of yourselves. Enjoy this beautiful time of the year. And I will see you again real soon. Bye for now.